Welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first time to our channel, this is Jordy, and he lives on that old wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while tolerating me making it into a sandy mess. Anyway, if that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, consider sticking around and subscribing. We'd love to have you aboard. Hey, Pop! All these pieces have been sanded and they're ready to go. So that one pops up right there. Put a few tacks in it. Next one, port side, port side. Goes right here. This actually acts as the casing for the window, so the window's gonna come in against it afterwards, but not just yet. Okay, next one. This one goes mirror image, right there. Make sure it's square. Now again, all of this is designed to come off again, relatively simple, but ideally not fall off. When I have to replace this, Right? Okay, so uh, what do we got? We got a few more pieces here. We got the uh, trim piece over here with the wire in it. So we run that through there, there. Done. So this one goes right in here. And this one goes here. Now, here comes the question. Okay, I'm going to break this into panels much like I did the door. Uh, so I imagine that's four feet, that was two feet, this is two feet. I'm going to divide them into roughly one foot panels. So that would be four panels along here. In other words, the spacing would look sort of like that. And when I mocked this up here, I thought that looks a little too busy, too many. So I'm going to divide it into thirds and put them roughly like that. Yeah. I don't care if some panels are wider than others. I mean, I, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I've marked them off. This is super simple. So, what do I got to do? Uh, uh, put some screws in. Need some screws and some bungs. Always, always more to do. Okay, then we got nine. Nine and nine. Perfect, okay. Drill some holes. There's no sense putting any screws through here because they're just screw into the window frame. Screw gun. Let's get a screw gun. Nice. Beauty. Because this is interior work and because it's possible I'll have to take this apart in the not too distant future, I'm going to fit the bungs dry. Now of course they're a friction fit. They're holding, they're not falling out. Plus by the time I get some oil and varnish on that it'll help seal them in. But it does mean that if I ever need to take them out it'll be super super easy. So these are my famous uh, lined up bungs that make it super easy to line up the grain. Basically there we go. Pop a few of these in. All right tap these up. All right, and the neat thing about not gluing them is you don't have to wait for them to dry. So we can cut them off straight away. ready for oil as is the cabinet so let's get some oil on stuff and then start thinking about finishing up the door
Okay, let's go with what we've been waiting for. I love to see the oil come onto this. Now this is the first time that the real mahogany and the door skin will start to look a little more similar. And it will bring the, uh, the color together a little bit. Okay. Good God, that's beautiful. Okay. All right, that's good. Now, before it dries, I have to rub it down because I don't want any actual oil left on the surface. And I've told you this a thousand times before. Anyway, so let's get going on the cabinet here. And uh, by the time that's done, I can rub that down. You heard that that's the coho. Love that boat. On its way to Port Angeles in Washington State. Many of you are familiar with um, Leo who's restoring um, the, uh, the Bristol Channel Cutter Tally Ho and he's restoring that in Squim or Squim, I don't know how they pronounce it, Washington State which is just a stone's throw from here across on the um, that ferry and I keep thinking I've got to find an afternoon to go over and say hi to Leo because it's fantastic stuff he's doing over there. For those of you who aren't familiar, um, this is tongue oil. <laughs> and um, I didn't think of mentioning it because I've talked about tongue oil so much in the past on this channel. Um, it is a fantastic first coat. Uh, it is not a suitable um, final finish for anything on a wooden boat inside or out because it is really not very UV stable and even the modest amount of sunlight that will come in the windows would give it a pretty hard time but it's a fantastic start coat for a bunch of reasons one is it's so forgiving as you can see you just mop it on this cloth has effectively become a tack rag so any dust that was still on the surface and believe me there was plenty is just picked up you don't let the oil um, dry in a film you're really just letting it just barely soak in and just get started. And then I'll overcoat with a uh, rather mundane product, um, which some of you will remember me using, called Wipe On Poly, which is a polyurethane plastic. But as a base, I can't believe what a difference it makes to bring out the grain and to add depth to the wood if your first coat is tongue oil. Going straight to the polyurethane doesn't have half the effect. Now I don't know if in this mixed light you can see what this is starting to look like, but wow, it's pretty awesome. Okay, that is done. Uh, I got the Here we go, this is dried enough that I was able to move the clamps inboard just far enough and I've already put the screws in on one side. Uh, now I'll just put a couple screws in on this side and we can take the clamps off and start sanding this up. All right, fire some screws in there. Very nice, okay. Done with the clamps. And that should be a relatively secure and strong doorway. Door thingy, what do we? Okay, so now there's a couple of steps to be done. Um, Got to sand it, make it all pretty, clean up the edges, make sure it fits, make sure it's still square. But more importantly, I have to rabbit out a dado so I can set the glass into it. Now, if we imagine this was the front side, I'd be rabbiting it out from the back all the way through to leaving maybe a quarter of an inch of wood left. So the glass would sit back a quarter of an inch from the front face maybe a maximum of a quarter of an inch of glass when it's stained glass, which it will be someday, giving me a quarter of an inch to put a tiny little bead of wood and some tiny pins to hold the glass in. In the meantime, I'm putting plain glass in because I don't have the opportunity to go and get any uh, leaded glass made up. So I'm just going to give it a quick sand because I want it to be really flat because I'm going to cut that dado in the router table, flipping it over and using the fence against the outside edge to cut in about a quarter of an inch 
and about half an inch deep. Now at the top, you say, okay, well how are you going to cut a curve? Well, you don't cut a curve. You cut it square. And the glass is square, or rectangular anyway, and it sits in the slot. So from inside the door, the glass is, is, is straight. When you look at the door from outside, it appears to be curved, but the glass is actually straight across inside. If that's a level of fakery that's intolerable to you, I, I apologize. I'm not cutting curved glass. No, just not doing it. Okay, so let me get this sanded up a little bit so it's good and flat. Okay, well, that's basically just to get it flat enough that I can do the next step of the work. Because, as you know, I consider levels of equity to be sequential, and I don't want to be working too hard about making this perfect and then screw it up when I route the data, which is the next most dangerous thing to do. So, uh, it's good and flat. This is looking like a pretty good door. I'm very, very pleased so far. Let's set up the router table. Okay, so I've set up the bit so I can run it along, and it's just going to take about an eighth of an inch off. Swing it around. Do a couple more cuts and I'll just successfully make deeper and deeper cuts. At the top, I have to dig much, much deeper. As you can see, I'm not even cutting in there yet. So it'll be a bunch of sequential cuts to get that in. Um, excellent. Uh, now I should just figure out which side of this is going to be the front. Which side is prettier? That looks good. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I hope I don't regret this. I don't know why I would. I'm going to say this is the front. All right, excellent. So the first cut is super stressful because that's where I could do a blowout, but I have a perfectly clean eighth of an inch dado in here now, so I can't really do any damage deepening it. You start right about there. Okay, well that worked out really well. The door is done and I'm pleased with it. Uh, while I routed the back out, I did make one little oopsie. Uh, but it won't be seen in the final door and when I put my little trim across the back, it won't be seen there either. Other than that, I am super, super pleased. Let's get some oil on this and install it. All right. Well, let's just go put it right in place, shall we? Very nice. Very, very nice. That is looking awesome. I am super, super pleased with this whole arrangement. We are going to finally wrap up this uh, aft bulkhead in the wheelhouse project, including the glassware cabinet. Everything here I am just so thrilled with. But it's time to finish it up, get some finish on it, get some glass in here, get some hinges on. Um, wrap that up today, that won't take too long. We have a couple of other things we need to do. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, the melted uh, LED overhead light fixture, there seems to be some confusion. This is a temporary work light fixture. You can see it's temporarily screwed to the overhead and uh, some paper towel here to keep it from damaging it. It's not intended to be a permanent fixture on the boat. So, yeah, I, I can understand what people say, well, why don't you replace it? Well, the truth is I'm going to throw it out um, shortly and I won't need it again because I don't need this kind of light fixture in the boat when it's not a workshop. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's holding its well. It's doing okay. It's not all that attractive, I know, but you're right. It is a conversation piece. Okay, let's get moving. Take this back down so that I can um, get some finish on in behind it. Well, I don't think it's very likely I'll... Uh, keep using this cabinet as a display case for the little Land Rover model, but I thought it was pretty cute in there in the meantime. I, I probably do need a place for it in the long run. All right, let's uh, get this down so we can finish all the parts of this individually. And that basically just pops off like that for now. Anyway. Okay, but before I can put any finish on this cabinet, I have to install the hinges. And uh, as some of you may know, that's my favorite little job. Uh, I don't want to put pencil marks on here anymore because this has now uh, had some finish on it. So I'm going to say, I'm putting these uh, sadly cheap little brass plated hinges on here because my favorite supplier of nice solid brass hinges, Lee Valley, is out of stock so i'm hoping that they'll be able to give me some hinges the same size so i'm going to put three inches up from the bottom and three inches down from the top 
and I'm going to say that's going to look just fine. So I'm going to mark it off with tape so that I can transfer it to both the door and the cabinet. Remembering that I'm marking it at the top and the bottom. Okay, I don't need these anymore. Okay, so basically I'll just cut the tape so it stays on both pieces when I take it apart. And um, I can then gain out these lovely hinges. Okay, so here we go. Um, cheap little hinges, but they'll do, as I said. So to make sure they stay square, well, let me back up a bit. For those of you who haven't watched me do this before, when I install hinges, I basically install them flat on the surface, drill the holes, screw them on, and then score out where it needs to be cut, uh, remove the hinge and cut them around the score. So that's what I'm going to do now. And the way I set a hinge 99% of the time is I just open it up all the way, sit it against the face, and that keeps it square and keeps a consistent depth so I don't have to worry about where it's sitting on here. So that'll go right there, right there. And I'll use my little spring-loaded counterbore tool here. Now I'm just going to touch it because this is a bit big for number four screws. And we'll shoot a few screws in there. Alright, the other end. Okay, now the fun part. Uh, there we go. Just basically score deeply, as deeply as you're going to want to gain the hinge, or maybe a little bit further just to be sure, on all sides. And then when you're doing this, you got to make sure you don't go off the end, so you do it in both directions. A little hard in this particular case. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the same deal here, basically take the hinge, slop it around the corner, line it up, drill the first Is everything in the right place here? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, drill the first one. Confirm it stayed square, it did. Good. Other side. Gosh, it got hot. You'll have seen I've changed my shirt. It uh, went from instant kind of wet spring to hot summer here. Okay, score. And the other direction. Good. Good. Get these off. Okay, done with the tape. Now, Got to figure a way that I can hammer on this. Need like a support. Anyway, let me think about that for a minute. So this should work pretty well. And good. I probably should have this in some sort of a vise, but this is working just barely. <laughs> okay. Oh, done. Oh, I hate that. All right, so I've just done a little bit of sanding to make sure that it fits perfectly in the cabinet, and it now does. In fact, i got to do a little more here because I have a tiny little blade burn i got to get off here. But it's time to put some plugs in because all the adjustments are done. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, these are going to be fit dry as well because there will be plenty of uh, varnish and such to keep them in there. Super, super straightforward. Very nice. Okay. Okay, so I've had to do a couple other things in here, but it's now time for the wipe on poly on this bulkhead and the cabinet which I 
actually put a little more oil on earlier uh, in a few places where I'd sanded it. So gotta wait for it to dry a bit. So let's get started with the bulkhead. Alrighty. I think I've mentioned before that this wipe on poly, um, again, this is not an endorsement. I just like this stuff. Um, is very, very, very forgiving uh, for dust on the surface because it practically turns your cloth into a tack rag because it dries basically as you're rubbing it on. So any dust that happens to be there just comes off on your cloth. So let's just get started up here. You're not going to see a big change because after all, the color was already darkened by the tongue oil, which I already put on. But this will add some sheen and protection because the tongue oil is no good. All right. Oh, it doesn't smell quite as lovely as tongue oil, but it is awfully easy to use. Oh, that looks nice. Has got a coat of the white bomb poly, the bulkhead, the door gets its second coat, all the bits and pieces for the cabinet, including its door and the cabinet itself. So I'm really, really pleased. Okay, so as usual, it is Friday and I'm still pulling together content for this week's episode. Um, time to get this wrapped up. The cabinet, the glass door. Look, I got the glass for it. Uh, so we'll put that all away. I think I've mentioned in the past I've had a pro <clears throat> plywood problem. Well, I still have this bloody sheet. A very expensive Okume Marine Plywood that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Uh, but it's kind of in the way and I've got to get it out of here, which means I have to cut it into strips so that I can keep it under the bed. Kind of hurts, but I have to imagine what I might use it for and cut it into suitable pieces for that. Now, the reason I got to get moving in here is because it's a bit of a surprise, but this wheelhouse has got to get tidy and cleaned up and um, habitable. Uh, very quickly and uh, more on that later, but in the meantime, let's just get uh, this out of here Some forts varnished and This finally put together. All right. Cheers All right Well, I can't tell you how much I am looking forward to cutting a hundred dollar sheet of plywood into strips of wood that might be usable in the future Yeah, all right, so uh, One foot strips I'm going with one foot strips. I'll mark off some one foot strips. One, two. That made short work of a piece of plywood that now I can store. Okay, <laughs> now that's interesting. Didn't I just explain the whole story behind the melted light and how I'm going to keep it until I'm finished working in here? It just packed it in. It just died and it's now completely dead. Which is great because it's got to come down the next couple of days anyway and hopefully I'll have enough light to do what I'm doing in the meantime. Anyway, it finally died. Okay, varnishing done. I got to get back to putting the cabinet back together. And um, that's pretty straightforward. Now the glass, I've set it in. However, I have cheated. I have just tucked it in, pinned in with a few screws for now because I don't want to use a saw in here right now to make tiny little wood strips that I was going to do for that because I have a bunch of varnish that's still really sticky. So I just got to get this back together relatively promptly. So I'm just going to mount these hinges. Pretty straightforward. It is really windy out. Really windy out. The boat is rocking. Alright, now I gotta make sure this doesn't go right through, because it will. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so what I need to do now is um, put a little screw in for a knob, because the knob I want, and I've picked the knob I want, is not available. It's out of stock. So I'm just gonna put in a tiny Screw for now. I'm going to be right there. Right about there is fine by me. Excellent. Now I have a knob to open and close it. Very elegant. Now uh, to get it back up on the wall. Now it starts with a screw in the back corner, right up there. And then. There'll also be some screws in the bottom here to just which will make it square and the square is defined by 
the door. So let me get a screw for that. Okay. So I haven't actually put any of these screws in yet, so I'm just going to put it right about there and see. It touches a little bit of the button. Oh, there we go. Just air right there. Oh, that's lovely. Perfect. And another one on the other side. Okay, so to put the shelves in, I have these little struts, and I now have two different lengths of them because I modified them slightly. So the shorter ones go on the lower level. My gosh, this boat is bouncing around. And they just go in like that. Shelf. The next four with the little round edges out. I'm actually just going to attach these with um, stainless steel pins. Uh, there we go. I like it. I like it. I like it. This is the piece that goes here. I'll put that back on. I had to modify it slightly because I wanted to cut it at the bottom so it's above this counter. Again, all of this is going to come on and off a few times, especially as I wire the boat some more. So that tucks in there. Very nice. And I made a little cover piece to go back here. It slides behind that and tucks up there, which will make sure that we don't have a problem when we put the counter in. So I'm just going to put a couple of tacks here and call that done. This piece, which carries the light switch, is going to take two more light switches. I just haven't set up for it yet. So that's holding itself in. I'm going to put one little pin right there and call that done. That doesn't, because that's definitely coming out again. The truth is the cabinet will probably come down when I do some of this work, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm happy with the heights, so I'm going to put a pin in each of the little struts. Hey, uh, I didn't really think about how I was going to get the gun in there. Let's, uh, we might have to take this part to do this. Left-handed, upside down, double trigger. Okay, now the shelves themselves don't need any fastening because they can't go anywhere. Now, there may have been some confusion. Um, I definitely will be putting some supports on these shelves in the future to carry things like wine glasses. If you can imagine a small piece of mahogany that has a trough in the bottom of it. In other words, like a little slot. So as it goes in, it'll have two sort of fingers that will hold each wine glass so that they can't tip over. And likewise for groups of other glasses, there'll be dividers in here. Uh, possibly with felt sides on who knows maybe so yeah but until i really get into using exactly how i'm going to use this cabinet i'm not going to bother with those and i'm not going to see for a little while anyway okay so a couple more of these beauty i love it i absolutely love it okay let's get some glassware to put in and there we go, all loaded up. I'm loving it. An absolute fleet of tall skinnies. Bunch of tumblers, my mug. There's even room for the Rover model, which of course won't stay in there. Uh, four white, four monstrously large reds, and uh, my pineapple mug, of which I have three. I, mean, I don't know what combination of stuff will actually end up in here, but I just love, love, love it. You've heard me say that before. Okay. Lots more to get on with. Another thing I should probably point out is that for many of the clips I shoot when I edit for this series, I uh, bring up the weight balance a bit. In other words, I enhance the lighting a bit so that you can actually see what I'm doing in here because there isn't a lot of light. Well, what that does is it washes out some of the grain because it increases the contrast tremendously. So if you see it now, that's what it looks like real. Uh, much darker in here, but of course the wood looks an awful lot nicer, I'm sure. Hello there folks, I'd like to welcome you to one of my absolute favorite quick meals. And you can probably tell, it's a grilled cheese sandwich. It's pretty standard stuff. So let's just see what I do. Um, 
real bread, something that you're going to slice by hand. Fortunately, I just happen to have the middle of this loaf left, so I'll just slice through here reasonably well. Something nice and thick. This is an awesome bread, not your average wonder bread. Oh, not quite a sourdough. It's, it's just really, really good. Okay, and butter, of course. And when I say butter, I mean lots and lots of butter. More butter than that. Probably more butter than that. What I do is I don't bother buttering the bread. I just melt the, bu the butter in the pan and uh, basically mop it up with the bread. Okay, let's go in here. Okay, that's getting nice and melted, ready to toss these in. So we'll just set those in there like that, let them soak up lots of that beautiful butter. Now, what I do is I basically start to butter fry both sides of the bread at once while I'm getting the cheese ready. Now this is, this is amazing stuff. This is a double smoked cheddar. Awesome, awesome stuff. So let's, let's hack off a good chunk of that. Oh, I don't know, some of that, a little more, quite a bit more probably. Let's see how we can arrange some of this. Break off some bits, stick it there, stick it there. Another full section in there. A little bit here. Uh, we can get a little more on there, I'm sure. There and there. Awesome. Now, not too hot because thick bread like this, you're going to have to make sure that the heat can get all the way through the bread to melt that cheese without burning the butter onto the bread too, too much. So basically, once it's starting to sizzle a little bit, slow that down. And what I want to do, I'll heat both sides of the bread until it's actually hot all the way through, and then I can flip it over so that some of that heat is already getting onto there. Okay, this is going to be awesome. Now, there is a secret ingredient, and this is it. A little bit of Dijon mustard on the bread. Oh, so yummy. You wouldn't believe the difference this makes. I only have a little bit left, so I've got to be a little bit sparing with it, but oh, it's so good. Okay, that's going to make such a difference. Okay, that's getting good and hot, so I can now flip that up and on. Give it a bit of a squish, but not too much. Just make sure it's intimate with that bread so that cheese gets melted. Now, some of the cheese is going to melt over the edge. Well, that's a good thing. Okay, so now it's just a slow sizzle till the end. It is super, super windy out here today. We are bouncing around. Nice place to be cozying indoors just now. Okay, we're getting some nice meltage along the edge there. I would say this is pretty darn close. Yippee. Okay, so let's haul that out of there and call that done. And uh, just so that it's manageable, I'm going to cut it in half down the middle. I'll show you what that yummy cheesiness looks like inside. Oh, oozy, yummy, cheesy. Let's have a bite of that, see what I think. Mmm, mmm, oh, and the mustard, mmm, so good. You know what this needs? A beer. What a great segue into this week's beer of the week. This is from the Tofino Brewery, which is, Tofino's a crazy little village. Anyone who knows Vancouver Island would know it pretty well. Way up on the west coast, it's an old fishing village, and now it's a surfing uh, beach. It's just kind of a really, really neat community. And uh, when I'm up there, I really like to have a couple of their micros from up there. This is their Blondale, which is supposed to have an earthy hop note and a bit of malty sweetness. So let's get a glass out of my glass cabinet. Oh, I'm liking this. And see how this pours. Pretty much an ale, no doubt about it. Let's see if I can pour a little ahead on the end. Just a bit. Maybe a bit too much. No, that turns out that it's really, really quite nice. It's actually darker than I thought it would be. It's got a lovely color. I'm really looking forward to this, in fact. Oh yeah, it's just a simple beer. Oh, it's not a simple beer. It's a straightforward beer with complex stuff going on. I really like it. I drink it quite a lot when I'm up in Tofino. I've forgotten it was such a beautiful golden thing. This is approaching my, my Sleeman's Honey Brown in color. Fantastic. So nasty 
buttery, cheesy grilled cheese sandwich, smoked cheddar, double smoked cheddar, and a fantastic ale. Mmm, hard to beat that. Absolutely yummy. So no new patrons this week, and that's just fine, but it uh, gives me an opportunity to cheers all the existing patrons and thank them for coming aboard. Cheers to you all. And perhaps a good opportunity to say that if you were ever thinking of becoming a patron, you should know that just the simple $5 uh, an episode sponsorship gets you a free Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Actually, there's quite a selection. This is the old style. There's some new style ones. And if you'd like to have a look, go on over to the Travels with Jordy store. Links for all that below. And uh, this will be an awesome time to consider coming on to Spain. Cheers.